Welcome to episode 97 of Meet the Gim. My name is Rolf Steinhardt and I'm recording this in Bremen, Northern Germany. Meet the Gimp is uh, in the moment featured uh, on the Miro guide. Um, about a third of uh, all the viewers who, are, who have subscribed to, to the podcast come from Miro. So perhaps uh, there are coming some more now and I say a big hello and a welcome. And for all the new ones, I'll uh, tell just a little bit about Meet the GIMP, GIMP and uh, all the rest around it. Uh, GIMP is, as you may know, an image manipulation program. You can post-process your photos from your digital camera or scans or so. You can paint and you can do things from scratch, as for example this one. GIMP is open source. So uh, it costs nothing um, and you can just download it from GIMP.org. Meet the GIMP is a video podcast about GIMP and uh, other open source uh, image manipulation programs and tools for digital photographers and so. Um, if it fits into open source and image, uh, this is the right place for it. I do my videos about once a week. Uh, I try to get uh, a video out each Tuesday and we have also Philip. Uh, he is in Chile and he does stuff from scratch, not based on a, on a picture, on a, on, a, on a photography like me, but he does it really from scratch. And his videos are here about twice a month and they come out on Thursday. And from time to time we have a video from guests. Then we have a forum which is not so active that uh, you have to read it for hours a day, but uh, it has the right amount for my taste, the right amount of activity and uh, very competent people in there uh, for answering your questions and uh, for getting one or the other idea. The thing I like most about the forum is that it is for me a source of ideas what to do in the podcast. And just now, I, my last podcast was about the, making images like this one here. This is a real life scene, nothing uh, like a model, no uh, model trains, but real people not made out of plastic. This topic was introduced by Bert, and he is uh, our script magician in residence. He can do everything with Python. And uh, here is Philipp. And this guy here is important too. It's Matthias and he runs the forum. A big thank you to these three and uh, all the others who are helping with uh, making this podcast possible. In the last video I took this image here and started to make uh, uh, such a mini image out of it. I defined where I wanted to have uh, the focus, the focus plane through this uh, thing, and there I made a big blunder. You see it here. I set my plane straight. And of course, if uh, we look from above into this uh, pit here, then the plane, the focal plane, should be running in this angle here, diagonal. So. This was a blunder, nobody found out. Please pay a little bit more attention. This is the original image. I then uh, plastified it a little bit with uh, applying an unsharp mask with a uh, little bit unusual values. And then I applied a selective sharpening which uh, lets pop out all these contours of uh, the details here. It now looks a little bit more like molded plastic instead of uh, real life stuff here. Um, this is, uh, as I found out now, not enough. We have to saturate this a little bit more, but I think I should do that uh, with the final image. Then I had uh, made a layer 
with some notes uh, about uh, the plane where I want to have the focus. Uh, this here shall be the center line. And you see here, it was running up here. It's now tilted. And now, the only thing is that is left is to blur this image. The GIMP uh, plugin registry has exactly what we need. It's called Focus Blur plugin. And uh, this is uh, a different blur than uh, just Gaussian blurring or other blurs. It, has, it looks more like made by a lens. The home page has quite a lot of information about it, but uh, it's uh, not easily to understand. It's uh, originally written in Japanese and needs uh, some help with, uh, transform with translation. And if someone uh, of you can speak Japanese or read Japanese and write English, uh, it would be nice if you give this guy a hand. There is a downloadable plugin for Windows, a pre-compiled com plugin for Windows, and I think uh, all people with uh, Linux and Mac OS will have to compile it for themselves. Uh, tips for that are in the forum, and I'll link to that. Now let's have a look what this Focus uh, plugin does, Focus Blur plugin. I, for that, I create a new image. I fill this image uh, with a checkerboard. This can be done with filters, then uh, render. Let me move this to the border so you can see the menu. Filters, render, and here pattern, there is a checkerboard, and a lot of other patterns uh, which are not as important now for me than uh, this one here. Okay, let's uh, do the checkerboard um, a little bit larger. This is okay, and I don't want to have the psycho billy in here. Okay, and now we have this here filled with a checkerboard. When we go to filters, blur, focus blur, if you don't find it, you have to install this plugin. Then we see here um, preview, as usual, and then here a basic tab and some others. Let's have a look first at the, the basic here. We can change uh, the uh, diffusion model and the radius. The diffusion model is the algorithm for blurring. And here I found that spherical is the best one for emulating uh, lens blur. We can increase uh, the, the radius and you see it gets blurrier and blurrier. Below here is something interesting. Use depth map. We can make a map for uh, controlling the depth of field and uh, the, the amount of blurring. And let's just try this. I make a new layer here. I fill it with white. And now I will uh, make a gradient here from black to white, from left to right. So black and white is here, this is here, and uh, we just fill this up with a gradient. Now put this layer below, and now apply the filter. Filters, reshow focus blur. Oh, what's up? Uh, okay, yes, I know. That's the old thing. If something is very strange, check on which layer you're working. I want to work on this layer and not on this with my depth map. Uh, so, again, filter, reshow focus blur. And here it is. And I say spherical and use a depth map. And here I take this one here. It shows here in, in the drop-down every, every layer that is open in GIMP. Uh, 
not only in the active image you can take the depth map from a different image. But let's take this one here. You see here, on the left side, where our map is black, we have a sharp image, which uh, gets unsharp the more we go to the right. Here on the right hand side, it's quite out of focus. And even if I go up here with my value, you see here the unsharpness creeping up, but this stays in focus. And on this side here, we have quite a blur. But here is another thing, focal depth. And I set this here, let's say, to 33. And now this starts blurry, gets clear at a third, and then continues to be blurred. We can set the focal plane here and define the gray value, which shall be uh, in focus. I haven't found any use for the stuff in the other tabs. So I just press OK and we have to wait a little bit. Uh, for big images this takes quite a long time, but uh, by sm small images are quite fast. And here is the final result. Blurry, sharp, and again blurry. Rob A, he's on the forum too at Meet the GIMP, um, he has made a tutorial about uh, using this plugin. And the trick with this is to create a depth uh, map that uh, is not a simple gradient as here, but uh, which reflects the different depth of uh, the of the buildings or of the the stuff in the image. For his image, he used uh, this depth map, and you see here all the high rises have uh, the same gray value the value at the bottom here. And as you'll see now, I took the same uh, principles and made my own depth map. I found out while working on this image that I have chosen the wrong image. <laughs> it's uh, really complicated to make this believable. Um, not, just, uh, not just nice, but that you can believe that it is uh, a macro shot. A simple gradient isn't very convincing here, and we have to make a family of gradients, and I uh, did it this way. I started with defining my center line here, the area where I wanted uh, the image to be really crisp and in focus. And forget uh, this part here, this has to be blurred away. Then I filled this area with a color that is 32% uh, of the whole range, a value of 32. I wanted to take uh, a third, but had a small glitch while selecting this color. And then I made a family of, of uh, gradients here, going from this here to full black, and from this to full white. This was uh, easy for simple parts of the image and uh, a bit more complicated for the, the more uh, complicated forms here. Let's just do it uh, for the floor here. I make a new layer, transparent layer. I have, uh, s I select my colors. This is the right one and I want the other one to be black. So, and now I select my selection tool here, make this image a little bit smaller so that I can go around with my selection tool. And now I select just the area here of the floor. Now my floor area here is selected and I get my blend tool. When you do the fill, you have to look that the gradient runs parallel to uh, your focus plane here. So I go from here and about here, I think, about here. And now 
I have a smooth uh, gradient from here to here, which is equal in all uh, the areas here. And this I did for the rest of the image too. Let me show you. The front and the left side, the area behind. I combined uh, these layers and made with uh, copy visible, or better here with layer, uh, new from visible, a layer which contained all these uh, parts and then um, fix a little bit here, you see a little bit of blur and so on, and let run a test. And this was the test. And this was the result. Let me show you this a little bit bigger. The blur is quite nice, but um, this here isn't convincing. Um, this is okay. The guy is okay. And uh, here we have an abrupt uh, switch from crisp to very blurry. And uh, we have here, we assume this is our focal plane. And here the sand heap here goes out of focus very fast. But uh, if you go from here to here, this should be the same distance. It is in focus. So this is, um, this is not right. There has to be done more. I added a sand hill and rerun this. And you see it here. Looks a lot more convincing. This area here is uh, really, well, it's a little bit out of focus, but that is okay. Um, it's a little bit further away than, uh, than our focal plane here. And, um, but here the machine is uh, not quite right. So I added a layer for the machine and this contains some gradients here and a blur and so on. Combined it to another map and uh, played a little bit around here with dodging and burning and made another rendering. And this is uh, as convincing as I can get it. To recap this, get the right image. <laughs> and uh, this is it not. Uh, the right thing in this image is that it is shot a little bit from above. It could have been a little bit more from above. Shoot with an angle from uh, top to down because uh, this is uh, the way we look at uh, small stuff. And then make it look a bit like plastic. You can use an unsharp mask for this to lose some details. And a good way is uh, just to go up with the saturation of the image. Oops. Here just pull the slider up. I think here about 30 or so is quite good for this image. I have done this uh, with my finished images. Next step is selective sharpening to get crisp edges because all these plastic toys, they have crisp contours. Then define an area where you want to have the focus and where not, and create a focus map, depth map. Um, I'm sure you can do better than I did here. And then finally, let the focus blur plugin run and make your final image. And perhaps uh, it needs some more fine tuning, a little bit of cropping or so. But I'll leave it at it is now. I found out that this is not my favorite uh, way of post-processing an image. It was fun to do it, but uh, I doubt that I will do it uh, more often. And I think this was it again for this week. And um, if you want to comment, uh, do it in the forum or on the blog at meetthegimp.org. Don't forget to subscribe to the to the feed if you haven't already. And with this, I say goodbye up to next week. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere.
podcastnetwork.com.